we're going to see how we can use Jetson Nano together with NVIDIA DeepStream to run these autolytics computer vision models crazy fast. So we can actually get up to two, three, four times inference speed increase by just using DeepStream Tensor RT optimizations from the models compared to just using the PyTorch version out of the box, even on CUDA GPUs. So we're going to go over all the installation steps. We'll take a look at the documentation. We'll jump into an NVIDIA Jetson board, see how we can install it, set it up and run crazy fast inference. We will go through all the steps and so on, and also see the output, how you can make customizations, and I'll also explain all the different parameters so you can tune in specifically for your own computer vision applications and projects. So I have an NVIDIA Jetson board right over here. I've just connected to it. I'm just on a TeamViewer connection. So I'm just going to jump straight into it here. I have an NVIDIA Jetson board out of the box with a Jetpack version. So you will buy an NVIDIA Jetson board. It works in the exact same way if you're running it on any like Ubuntu server, any cooler device, anything. We just need an NVIDIA GPU to use CUDA, DeepStream, Tensor T optimizations and all that. So right now, let's just jump into Firefox. I'm going to open up the documentation here. If we go to the home page, I'll just show you how we can find the actual page, page. And we're also going to use YOLO 11. Right now, let's go inside the guides tab. We have videos covering NVIDIA Jetson, DeepStream and NVIDIA Jetson for YOLO V8, Tensor RT and all that. So definitely, if you need more details, if you need like more Basically, just more information, more knowledge about how DeepStream work, Tensor RT, how is all, all the optimizations that's being done, what are the different high parameters, like parameters, arguments that you can specify when we do the Tensor RT optimizations with bad size, we have like precision, half precision, and all that. Definitely check out those videos. So, right now, let's just jump straight into DeepStream on NVIDIA Jetson. Here we can see this DeepStream SDK. So, we have video sources it's a very good sdk framework where we can connect multiple different video sources we can do tensor rt optimizations it's basically just a single configuration file that we need to modify we can change the batch size video stream we can run a pre-recorded video stream we can run an rtps stream and so on so it's very easy to work with once you get familiar with it there's a bit steeper learning curve compared to just using autolytics out of the box but if you want the fastest processing speed as possible you should use deep stream together with ultralytics it's really good for deployment how we can basically just make it faster you can even run optic tracking and all that on top of the detection models as well so here we can see the whole architecture it will do capturing decoding on hardware as well it will do synchronization parallelization do all the stream moxing if you have multiple streams connected together basically just taking care of the whole flow of data so you just need to bring the model set up deep stream and you're good to go first of all we'll take a look at the prerequisites we have different deep stream sdk for different jetpack versions so make sure that you have the correct one probably just go with one of the newer jetpacks depending on what nvidia jetson device you have First of all, we can go inside the terminal as well, and there's something called JTA. You can just pip install it directly. Here we can see all the specs, all the GPU, all the resource usage, and so on. But we can also go inside the info tab, where we can see all the libraries, the platform, and all the different versions and dependencies that we have. So when you have an NVIDIA Jetson and you have these Jetpack versions installed directly, we have all this out of the box, CUDA, CUDNN, Tensor RT, Vulkan, OpenCV, everything is covered out of the box so we don't have to spend time on setting things up because it can be pretty hard getting all the dependencies, all the CUDA versions and all that to work. So if you're running into any problems, it's most likely some versions not matching up or you basically just have something mix and match and it just doesn't run together. It could also be your PyTorch version. So it's now we have all the information here. You can go and check it out. So it's a really cool tip. Now let's go back inside the documentation. We just have a few steps that we can run. So right now I had Jetpack version six. So let's go for this one down at bottom and also DeepStream 7.1. Now we need to go in and go in and do the DeepStream configuration. So we need to CD into our home directory or any directory where we want to install it. We can pip install it. Going to copy paste the command. There we go, we will pip install it, or we will pip install pip. Then we can clone Autolytics' GitHub repository. 
Again, you can just go line by line, copy all of these. This is on my Jetson board over here. So I'm just on a team viewer connection from my MacBook. It's a really good work way to work with them as well. So we don't have to connect monitor, keyboard, mouse, and all that. And we just have a GPU server, pretty much just available NVIDIA GPU server directly available on our MacBook. So you can see, I already have it on my computer. So we can just see the into autolytics and we can then go in and pip install all the dependencies. When you're copy pasting here, you have to press Control V when you're in uh, Ubuntu. In the Ubuntu terminal, you have to press Shift Control C and V for copying and then Control Shift for pasting. Unless you go inside the preferences and change the change the commands in here or basically just the, the different shortcuts that you have. You can change it in here, so just Control C, Control V. But if your copy pasting doesn't work, it's the most important thing for developers. So it's really important to know. So we've installed everything that we need. Then we need to go in and grab this GitHub repository as well. I've already cloned it, and this will be outside the Autolytics repo as well. If we go in and take a look at it, it's basically like just how can we set up the configurations for DeepStream, but also the configurations for our YOLO models. There's a lot of readme files in here if you want to know more details about all the arguments, all the different things here in the, in the files then you can go in and check that out but the main one is our deepstream app configuration and also our yolo v8 you can use yolo v8 for yolo 11 model as well so if we just take a look at that it's basically just specifying our own next file so it will convert it to own next first and then to tensor rt engine this is the engine file that we're going to get out as an output we can have in a calibration we have our labels the text file with all the labels that we have for our data or for a model that we want to predict we can set the bat size network mode if you want to use floating point 32 it's going to be zero if you want to use in a calibration it's going to be network mode one and network mode two will be floating point 16 bits so this is how you can do quantization if you want to know more about that definitely check out the other tens rt videos that we have here on the channel now of classes 80 so this is basically just all the model configurations that we need to set up we also have this custom library path for our NVIDIA inference engine. We're going to compile that and basically just build that library in just a second. The other configuration that we need to take a look at is our deepstream underscore app underscore config. This is our title display. So the windows that we're going to show from our output, we have our file here. So this is an example file. You can also use a custom path, which we're going to do. And you can even just specify a RTPS stream here and then the stream URL, username, password, and so on, if you have that. Number of sources, you can make replicas. You can also just create more sources like this. So you can just create a copy paste this and create a source one. This is very easy to play around with. You can specify a bad size for a stream mixer. So easy. it's a configuration file for DeepStream. We have our model configuration, and then NVIDIA will take care of the rest. So make sure that you're familiar, make sure that you understand these different configurations and also how it works this is everything that we need in here we're just going to get cloned so i already have it if i cd back we cd into our deep stream yellow there we go and we have all the files in here already that's it we can copy paste our export yolo command so I'm going to grab this. They have an export v 8 script. We will copy paste that from this directory into Autolytics. Then we can download a model or use our own pre-trained model. And then we're going to convert it into ONX. Once it converted into an ONX, we can throw that directly into DeepStream. So I'm just going to run this here. I actually need to go back. There we go. Could also do it from in here. There we go. We have now copied it. We can go in and download our weight file and you can specify small, medium, large, whatever. Right now we're just going to go with the small model. It's going to download it automatically. There we go. It has been saved. Now we can run the export command or the export script that we just copy pasted from the DeepStream YOLO repository into our Autolytics repo. So we're just going to run this one. We need to be inside Autolytics because that's where we just copied it. So let's see the into Autolytics. It's just ls, so we make sure that it's actually in here. 
Let's see. Export ULV 8py So we can now run this command in here and it's going to generate our own NX file. All these different parameters, arguments, you can specify that as well. So we got an invalid wait file. It should be in here. We have ULV in, so we have the nano model. It was the wrong place we downloaded the weights. We can just rerun it. There we go, and now we should be able to run it. So now we both have the small and the meat nano version in here. There we go, create a labeled file, and it's also going to create the own and X file. We alias again, and now we can see we have our YOLOV11 small dot own and X model. Offset 12, it's gonna default to 16. Again, if you don't know any of these parameters, definitely go just stick with default ones. One of the cool ones is that we can set it to be dynamic then it will dynamically handle the bat size. But if you have a static bat size, you can also specify that, and it's going to be like significantly faster. Could be that you have multiple streams, could be that you just will have a video file, some video files that you want to process as fast as possible, then it's definitely going to have a huge advantage using batches. Now we can copy paste this one into our deep stream. So let's grab this, we copy paste the model in there. And right now we have an error because this is not YOLO v 11 s PT, so we need to update the, the docs. But again, we have our LS, so we know exactly what model we have. So we want to copy paste this model here and the labels text file into our deep stream YOLO because this is where our configuration is going to point to. So now I've copied it here. We can CD back and into our deep stream YOLO. There we go. We can export our CUDA version. and I have CUDA 12.2. You could see that if you use the JTOP command. Now we need to compile this library here. So this is what's inside our deep stream YOLO. This is basically just how we can run the NVIDIA infer module. There we go. It's gonna run in the background. Now we need to go in and edit all these configuration files that I already showed you. So if I'm going to open up the files, we go inside deep stream YOLO. We have our V8 infer config, then we have our YOLO small, change it to the small model. We specify the engine file output. So this is this model B1, bat size one, DPU zero, floating point 32 engine. You can also specify the network mode, bat size, all of it can be specified in here as we went through in the documentation. So right now, or inside the GitHub repo, so right now I have saved this. We save it, we close it, and then we can go into our we can also have our model. So we have our small model that we just specified as well. We go inside our deep stream app config, and this is where we can specify the custom video. So if you have a custom video, I just have it inside my download directory, a cast.mp4 video. So this is how you can use a custom video. You can also have a custom model. Instead of using the pre-trained model, you can just directly specify your own custom model that you have trained with Ultralytics. Or you have tons of videos covering the whole pipeline of how you can take a data set, train a model, and export it. So yeah, let's see if it, it's done in here. There we go. It's done basically just building and compiling this library. We changed the configuration file. We changed the, the, um, the infer file. And now I think we're pretty much good to go. We can specify the URI as well. And there we go, we can run inference. So first time it's going to run, it's gonna generate the engine file from our own next file. So it could take 20, 30 minutes to generate that in the first run. But after that, it's going to automatically just load in the previous engine file that we created. And it's going to run inference directly in the first go, the second time we run it. But the first time it needs to generate the engine file as you will see in just a second. Deep stream app, and then we're going to run this configuration. So it probably only took 10, 15 minutes to generate this engine file here. I can rerun it again, the application, and now it's going to run this model. We'll see the frames per seconds, but also the inference in the output. All the output, everything that we see here can be configured inside the files. 68 or 58 frames per seconds, almost 60 frames per seconds, I'll be running the YOLO 11 model on which is the small version. So even if we go with the nano version, it's gonna be even faster. So we get a bit faster compared to what's inside the documentation here, but it looks pretty good. We're detecting all the cars here, even some cars in the background. This is doing very good for the YOLO small, YOLO 11 small model. Very awesome. 
significantly faster compared to if you're not using DeepStream and TensorRT optimization. So if you're working with NVIDIA hardware, definitely make sure that you explore this. Works very fast. It's only a few steps that we need to set up. You could run into some errors, but just make sure you have a fresh install. You have the JTOP, you check, you have all the different Jet version, Jetpack versions. Everything is installed in there with TensorRT, your CUDA stuff. Make sure that you have all the versions as I went through in this tutorial. If you have that, you can just run the exact same commands as I did. You can use your custom models and that's pretty much it. Then you can run inference at crazy fast speed on NVIDIA hardware. Only a few commands. It took me probably around like 10 minutes. You can do it faster if you're not talking. So definitely go and check it out. I hope you learned a ton of this video here. Make sure that you go through it again so you understand how it works. It looks very easy. It looks very easy, all the different steps and so on, but it's still important to know all the different parameters, what's going on under the hood and so on, if you want to do customizations. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.